Before this video begins, I would like to give a quick thank you to my Asbantium level patrons, Fallon Cortez and Nathan Gibson. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. So recently I made a big what if video about how Doctor Who Series 2 might have looked if the 9th Doctor hadn't regenerated in Parting of the Ways. However, all that talk of Series 2 and Rose's departure reminded me of something I stumbled across a long time ago. A vague Doctor Who spin-off that only exists as a footnote in the franchise's history? If you have followed this channel for a while, you might know I like to explore the mysterious landscapes of unmade Doctor Who media. From lost stories to forgotten films and cartoons. When Doctor Who exploded back onto screens in 2005, it led to spin-offs like Torchwood and the Sarah Jane Adventures. But you might be surprised to know that there was actually going to be a 2007 spin-off about companion Rose Tyler. It's an oddity that has done the rounds a fair amount over the years, but there's also a bunch of misreporting regarding it. So what would this spin-off have been about and why did Ross T Davis outright refuse to make it? Well pull up a chair because it's time for me to tell you about the story of the short-lived Rose Tyler Earth Defense. Rose Tyler, Defender of the Earth. Okay, so let's set the scene. It's 2005 and Doctor Who Series 1 is a huge success, completely relaunching and resurrecting the Doctor Who brand after years of obscurity. Production on Series 2 is already underway, with Series 3 also already commissioned and the future is looking bright. Things are going so well in fact that a spin-off has already been commissioned by BBC3 controller Stuart Murphy. This project had its roots before Doctor Who's return, with showrunner Rusty Davis having been inspired by Buffy the Vampire Slayer and Angel to pitch a sci-fi crime drama called Excalibur. This would ultimately become Torchwood, named after the anagram code word used during the production of Doctor Who Series 1. But as production of Torchwood begins in earnest and production of Doctor Who Series 2 also continues to heat up, there are also discussions that would end up being somewhat lost to time. Hushed whispers of a second spin-off, one following a companion having her own adventures after leaving the Doctor. And no, it's not the one you're expecting. A big part of Series 1 was the sudden departure of lead actor Christopher Eccleston, introducing audiences to Doctor Who's revolving door approach at a very early point. Eccleston left Doctor Who because of a number of personal issues he had with the production team and higher-ups at the BBC. But despite his co-star Billy Piper staying for Series 2, she also had her own personal struggles, as she revealed in a BBC4 interview in 2021. We also didn't know that it would be successful, but it made me really famous again in that sort of mainstream fame way that I find really uncomfortable. Early on in 2005, Piper told Rusty Davis that she wanted to leave the show, not wanting to stifle her career after already playing Rose for two years. Davis didn't want to kill Rose off, so he ultimately forcefully separated her and the Doctor as we see in Doomsday. This would eventually become one of the most iconic elements of modern Doctor Who, a definitive story beat and visual fans still discuss and celebrate to this day. Day. Rose being stranded in a parallel universe was the end of her story, with no way of her ever seeing the Doctor again. But immediately after writing Doomsday, Russell T Davis had an idea. A very dangerous idea. According to an interview in Doctor Who Magazine 373, in which Davis also casually mentions he considered making Martha Jones a lesbian just for how controversial it would be, the showrunner explains that the day after writing Doomsday, he walked into the office of executive producer Julie Gardner and pitched her a 90 minute special to air on 2007's May Bank Holiday. This would be called Rose Tyler Earth Defense and chronicle Rose's exploits on the parallel world as she joins their version of Torchwood and fights evils righting wrongs. Of course, this wouldn't be the first time such a spin-off would exist. On the 28th of December 1981, K9 and Company's pilot episode A Girl's Best Friend aired, exploring the life of former companion Sarah Jane Smith as she investigates mysteries alongside the iconic robot dog K9, despite, you know, the pair never actually even existing in Doc 2 at the same time up until that point. K9 and Company was meant to be an ongoing series with this former companion in the lead role, completely separate from the main show. And that's what Rose Tyler Earth offence would have been like. TARDIS Wiki does claim that alternate versions of Adam, Captain Jack, Gwen Cooper, Dinosaurs and Slitheen would have appeared in the show, but there doesn't actually seem to be any real source for that, so take it with a grain of salt, it might be misinformation. 
I could just find it on one random blog somewhere. It's not actually got any official proof. Anyway, Earth Defense wasn't just a title and a pitch. It was actually commissioned and budgeted. Davis explains in the interview that they would have had done brilliant things with their lovely budget, with potentially a bank holiday special once a year. Indeed, a year before the success of School Reunion paved the way for the Sarah Jane Adventures, the landscape of Doctor Who spin-offs could have been completely different. But obviously, unless you've been like yesterday into a parallel universe of your own, Rose Tyler Earth Defense never happened. So, what went wrong? As a brief bit of personal analysis, I think the first roadblock for this spin-off would have been Billy Piper herself, who, as I mentioned, wanted to leave Doctor Who to avoid the intense media spotlight and also explore other career opportunities. Davis admits in the interview that they hadn't formally approached Piper regarding the spin-off, even though it was already commissioned. Although they apparently had mentioned it to her, so I guess there were some discussions. It's hard to say whether Piper would have even been up for it, but any decision was made for her during the filming of Doomsday. For Four weeks after the spin-off had been commissioned in the first place, Davis came to realise it would be a spin-off too far. So he decided to cancel the whole thing, a decision that apparently cost him a fortune, with Davis claiming he shot himself in the foot financially. Elements of the spin-off would eventually be incorporated into Series 4 of Doctor Who, charting Rose's ominous return to our universe by travelling through different dimensions to finally get back to the Doctor. But it's hard to say how much of this would actually have happened in the spin-off. Despite how his era looks in hindsight, Davis hadn't actually had any long-term plans to bring Rose back in the way he ended up doing. Sure, from an early stage he had hoped his final series would serve as a culmination of his era, with lots of returns, but Rose only really became part of that plan later on. So it's entirely possible that the spin-off would have been completely localised to Pete's world, and Rose would have remained trapped there with no universe jumping. The main reason Davis cancelled Rose Tyler Earth Defence is because he believed it would spoil Doctor Who. To quote the writer, It spoils Doctor Who if we can see Rose and the Doctor can't. After they separate on that beach, if we see as a concrete fact that her life continues to be as exciting without the Doctor. And I definitely agree with him in that regard. Rose's departure was so memorable and tragic because of its finality. It wasn't just that she was being ripped away from the Doctor, it was also the fact that there was no way for us as the audience to see her again, because the Doctor is the main character we follow. Having a spin-off about Rose in this parallel world would have really cheapened that exit and stripped away a lot of the consequence from it. The K9 and Company spin-off, for all its flaws, made sense because Sarah Jane was still within the same universe as the Doctor. She had simply stepped out of the TARDIS and gone back to her normal life. Rose, on the other hand, had very different circumstances leading to her departure, and those circumstances are either the worst or the best ones for a spin-off, depending on your creative integrity and the time period you're in. It's important to remember that at this point, the Doctor Who brand was still very volatile. Despite the success of Series 1, there was still a lot of important work needed to be done to repair the show's reputation and the value. For a big part of the audience, Doctor Who was a legacy show, something that belonged in the 20th century, a quirky oddity of British TV to be either mocked or fondly remembered for its flaws. For the rest of the audience, it was essentially a brand new show, something that needed to be established and grow naturally without forcing anything. In Davis's interview, he expressly talks about how wary the production team was at the time, not wanting to overdo it and lead to overkill. Also, just as a side note, Davis, you did the Jesus Doctor, I still respected you. You did the Meta Crisis, I still respected you. You even did by generation, and even though it was difficult, I still respected you. But then you came for the 2003 Clone Wars, and that's where you lose my respect forever. How dare you? Jokes aside though, the interview sees Davis admit how cautious he even was about the CBBC's talk show Totally Doctor Who, thinking it could damage the overall Doctor Who brand. Again, to quote Davis, the moment that Doctor Who suffered, we would ditch anything else, any spin-off or extra that we needed to ditch and just get on with repairing Doctor Who, because it drives everything. Rose Tyler Earth Defense could have absolutely destabilised Doctor Who and damaged the brand, due to those issues of removing consequence from the main show, especially so early in its return. 2006 wasn't the time to start taking a lot of risks. Totally, Doctor Who and Torchwood were already big leaps of faith with significant risk involved, even with the successes of Series 1 and Series 2. Davis knew Torchwood wouldn't get the incredible ratings of Doctor Who, and throwing in a third spin-off so soon would have definitely created 
created a sense of overkill. Even a single special of Rose Tyler Earth Defense would work against the magic and longevity of Doctor Who. And that's coming from someone who both loves Doctor Who spin-offs and the fascinating setting of Pete's world. I love getting as much on-screen Who content as possible, and it would have been a brilliant chance to explore Pete's world, but the optics would have been so bad for the wider show. If Rose, the first modern companion, gets her own show along with Captain Jack getting his own show, then people would wonder where Martha's show is, then Donna's, and so on. Remember, this was a media landscape incredibly different to our own. This was long before things like the Star Wars Mandoverse and the Marvel TV Universe. That precedent of oversaturated TV franchises hadn't been set yet. And also, Rose Tyler Earth Defense was born and killed before Series 2 even came out. The production team had no idea if Doctor Who's success was just a flash in the pan fluke or a genuine media phenomenon, so every decision was heavily scrutinised and needed to be perfect. A single misstep could have had disastrous consequences. It was only after the success of Series 2 and Torch with Series 1 that the Sarah Jane Adventures moved into full production. And then the so called Hooniverse followed. Rose Tyler Earth Defense was simply in the right place at the wrong time. However, in the many years since its short-lived existence, Rose Tyler Earth Defense has had spiritual successes. 2020 saw the publication of the comic Alternating Current, where the 10th and 13th Doctors encounter an alternate timeline version of Rose Tyler, who is a freedom fighter against Sea Devils, a kind of showdown you could imagine happening in the original spin-off Davis pitched. However, more significantly, Big Finish's Dimension Canon is essentially Rose Tyler Earth Defense, but in audio form and with a narrative hindsight of Rose's dimension hopping journey. In issue 126 of Big Finish's Vortex magazine, producer David Richardson explains that he approached Russell T Davis with the intention of adapting Earth Defense for audio. The former showrunner was very enthusiastic about the idea and offered to be involved, helping the production team develop ideas and storylines. According to the magazine, Richardson and Matt Fitton had been struggling to craft an identity for Rose Tyler Earth Defense, but then Davis suggested the idea of the Dimension Canon, fleshing out the off screen events between series 2 and series 4 of the live action show. As of this video, there have been three Dimension Canon box sets released since 2019. Seeing Rose explore alternate timelines and parallel Earths on her journey back to the Doctor. It's a decent spin-off, with the kind of mixed bags you should expect from modern Big Finish. It's obviously all very different from the idea of Earth Defense. Rose does work for Torchwood, but aside from that, there's minimal world building regarding Pete's world. There are no alternate Adams, Jacks or Gwens, and certainly no Dinosaurs or Slovene. It's essentially a distant relative of the idea of Earth Defense, but it's still a good glimpse at how a Rose Tyler centric spin off may have turned out, even giving Rose her own companions and support team, along with the Dimension Cannon essentially being her TARDIS. Part of the success of Torchwood and the Sarah Jane Adventures is how they took the framework of the main show and just kind of pasted it onto these other characters in an Earth based setting. So I imagine Rose Tyler Earth Defense would have done similar things to retain the Doctor Who DNA, although I'm not sure how it would have worked as a once yearly series of specials. It's a difficult release really schedule to write for when building an established establishing a show, so it might not have gone anywhere. But yeah, that's the story of Rose Tyler Earth Defense, the Doctor Who spin-off Davis refused to make. But it's not the only one, oh that's a different story for another time. I've always been fascinated by unmade Doctor Who content, and Earth Defense is a really interesting one. A spin off that could have completely derailed and altered the trajectory of Doctor Who in its infancy, when every decision had to be carefully planned and thought out. I also think it's a big example of how much Davis treasures the character of Rose, something that many fans still joke about to this day, especially after he literally named a new character after Rose. After writing Rose Tyler out of the show, he immediately began to think of technicalities to continue her story. So I actually do appreciate the restraint he showed by cancelling it, especially so soon after entertaining the thought. Dimension Canon kind of fills the void with its own story, but it's a shame we don't really have any more actual details about what Earth Defense might have looked like, probably because it was such a short-lived idea they didn't really have the time to create anything. As I mentioned earlier, there are no concrete sources regarding the alternate versions of characters, and some sites have claimed that scripts were written, even though that's blatantly not true because of how brief it even was in existence. Regardless, Rose Tyler Earth Defense was absolutely right to be cancelled, since it would have 
really cheap and Rose's departure in Doomsday, along with also probably stepping on the toes of Torchwood itself. But what do you think? Would you have watched Earth Defense? What stories should it have told, or what villains should have appeared? Let me know in the comments. Thank you very much for watching, and as always, I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye. And I'd just like to quickly thank my Bantam level patrons, Fallon Cortez and Nathan Gibson, my Diamond level patron, Glenna Clark, my Platinum level patrons, Matthew Burns and Maximilian Foreman, and all my Gold level patrons, Daniel Shilito, Franz Orn aka Lan Vortex, Leigh Marie Farrell, and Tom Azar. Thank you so much for your support.